very, what I've heard throughout the night echoing in my mind is a quote that's been said often, we are the people that we've always been waiting for. Is that right? Is that the quote? We are the ones that we've always been waiting for. We're the leaders. Well, I hope so. Uh, let me say, first of all, that I'll be real brief because I know we got a lot of people want to ask questions. I just want to say that, to me, it's really a good thing when you're at a discussion and you don't want to talk, you want to march uh, when you hear people talking. This, made, this evening has made me feel like we got to start marching again. And, and I, I want to get back to, yeah. <laughs> I want to get back to, to, to what Dr. West said about uh, uh, about history, because I think this, this is really important, because this society has not only made poor people invisible, it has made the struggle of poor people invisible. Yeah. The history yeah, of right. the struggle of poor that's people right. Right. Uh, is invisible. And I, I just, I think it's so important that people realize uh, that this struggle in our country uh, ha at one point led to us declaring as a nation a war on poverty. And we have since gone from a war on poverty to a war on poor people. Right. And that ain't the same thing, you know? So I, I think what happened was, in fact, this the people in charge, the people running this place, and I don't mean just politicians, but all the corporate interests, have had a vested interest in denying the struggle for human rights in this country. They have tried to make it out that there was a struggle for civil rights in this country, and then there was a struggle for human rights in other parts all over the world, but in this country we didn't need human rights because that was all taken care of by the system we had. So when you listen to the history, you'll hear them talk about the March on Washington, like that was a civil rights march, but they won't mention that it was a march for jobs, you know? And when, when they talk about Dr. King, they don't talk about the fact that he was not just a civil rights leader, he was a human rights leader. And that's very, very important. Because human rights meant you got to deal with everything, including economic and social rights, including supermarkets, including good food, including good education, including good health care. You have to deal with the whole person. That's what Dr. King was doing. It's not a coincidence that he was killed organizing poor people right. in Memphis. That's what he was doing. He was organizing poor people, and we wiped out, we have wiped out that history of human rights in this country. In fact, we are one of the few countries in the world that has denied uh, that there are economic and social rights. We refuse to sign the covenant on economic and social rights. We refuse to admit that there are economic and social rights. Why is that? Because if we did that, if we taught everybody in this room, you have economic and social rights, poverty is a denial of your rights. It's not an economic phenomenon that just happens when we watch, sit back and watch like we're watching television. It's a denial of your rights and you, and you're quite right. The power is in this room to change it. Right. We can change it, but you've got to create a movement again to change it. It's not going to happen automatically or easily. It's got to have a movement. Got to have a movement, and it's got to be a human rights movement, not a civil rights movement. I just want to close on one personal note. The reason this is so important to me and so personal is that I grew up. Uh, obviously, I didn't grow up in a poor black family. <laughs> I was a minority in my community because I grew up in a poor white family. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And like a lot of people in that time, and this was in the 60s with my mother who was very poor, struggling, had a single woman, had three kids, couldn't feed them. She had the disease of a lot of poor white people. She didn't like black people. <laughs> and one night I came home, one more afternoon I came home from school, and we're watching television. On the television there's a march. There's a march on Washington, and it's full of people, and, and the leadership of that march are black people. And my mother looked at me and she said, what are they doing? And I said, well, they're fighting for poor people. And she said, well, then I want to be with them. I want to be with them. Because she saw them fight for poor people. And that's what I think is so important. We've got to build a human rights movement again in this country. And if we are the people that we've been waiting for, then we are the people who will begin to demand our basic human rights. And I'm so proud of you.